Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of a WordPress website video series. This video is a supplementary video added on to the end of my DIY hosting of a WordPress website video series, which I've added so that I could show you how you can address your website with and without the www subdomain. I'll explain why I've added this video shortly, but before I get on to that, I'd just like to raise to your attention my Patreon account. If you're interested in accessing videos that aren't available on YouTube, uh, particularly those that I put on early before I upload them to YouTube, if you'd like one-to-one -one support, if you'd like to suggest content, um, or if you'd just like to support my work, please do check out my Patreon account. I'd appreciate it. Okay, so why is this video here? Well, one of my patrons who has followed this video series pointed out to me that his website at www. was working fine. But when he omitted the www from the start of his domain, it didn't work. He actually received a certificate warning from Cloudflare. As I'm sure you're aware, it is common practice for a website to be addressable with and without the World Wide Web subdomain prefixed to the address. If you've been following along with my course to date, I'm afraid you will find the same thing as my patron did. Your website with the www dot uh, in front of the domain, so the www subdomain, will work fine, but without it, you will get a Cloudflare error. So why haven't I included it, you may be asking. Uh, why have I left it such that you can't address your website without the subdomain www? Well, the reason is that I wanted to keep the configuration and setup to an absolute minimum to focus on getting the website up to avoid people becoming bored of the process before they got there. But on hindsight, this omission isn't really necessary, and I realized it might not be obvious how to correct this yourself. So in this video, I'll explain how we can solve the issue and have it so that we can address our website with and without the www subdomain. Okay, so just for reference, video 18 of this video series is how I show you how to obtain a wildcard certificate for any subdomain. Now, the root of the problem is just this. It's that in video 18, we created a TLS certificate for all subdomains by using a wildcard uh, to define any subdomain of our domain. And this is known as a wildcard certificate. This is great. It means that moving forwards, you could add additional subdomains should you want them. But it does mean that addressing your website without any subdomain won't work because you'll get a H you, when you attempt to connect via HTTPS, you'll get a certificate error. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what that looks like. So in my case, my domain addressed through HTTPS looks like this. If I have a www subdomain in front of my domain, it will work absolutely fine. If, however, I type in my domain without www dot, I am unable to get to my website and I get a Cloudflare error. Um, and interestingly, because we set up a wildcard certificate in video 18, if you were to point your DNS server towards hello as well as www, so if you were to put an A record in for hello, this would also work because we obtained a wildcard certificate. If we hadn't, it wouldn't, but we did. And I made sure we did obtain a wildcard certificate to make sure this kind of thing was possible moving forwards. But of course, I omitted the concept of having the domain without the www dot subdomain. So that's what I want to remedy in this video is making sure that you can actually address your website like this as well. So let's head over to my desktop then and I will show you how we can do this. Okay, here we are on my desktop. I'm going to SSH in using my SSH alias Pi as I always do. Okay, so we don't need to go anywhere to retrieve the updated certificate. We can do this from our home directory. So copy along with what I type and at the end I'll explain what has changed between the previous certificate acquisition in video 18 and this one. So type as I type, sudo certbot cert only hyphen hyphen dns hyphen cloudflare hyphen hyphen dns hyphen cloudflare hyphen credentials Okay, so that's two um, flags, DNS Cloudflare and DNS Cloudflare credentials. And then we need to point to the credentials file. So I'm going to use a tilde to refer to my home directory forward slash dot secrets 
slash cloudflare.ini minus d followed by your domain. So in my case, it's single hyphen entity.com comma and then star dot and again your domain. So in my case, single hyphen entity.com and then hyphen hyphen preferred hyphen challenges and then at the end we're going to type in dns hyphen zero one okay so it's just wrapped off screen there but that's just dns hyphen zero one right so before we press enter let's take a quick look at this command what the command is saying is certbot please retrieve a certificate using the cloudflare dns credentials we filled in during video 18 for the subdomains domain.com sorry for the domains domain.com and for all subdomains of that domain so in my case for the domain single hyphen entity.com and for all subdomains of single hyphen entity.com in my case so uh, all subdomains and with no subdomain now be careful um, there is supposed to be no space on either side of the comma in this command so when you press enter make sure that there are no spaces there. So hopefully it's quite clear what the difference is between the, this, this line here and the one that was done in video 18. And that is that we've added the line, the part of the line here where we're just saying for the domain without any subdomain, I'd like to retrieve a certificate as well as for all subdomains, okay? So press enter, uh, when you do, you'll be asked whether or not you wish to keep your existing certificate or whether you wish to retrieve a new one. Number two, I believe, is retrieving the new one. So that's the one you want to select. So press two when you get asked and then carry on. I'm not going to do it because I have already done it before this video. So I'll just um, get rid of that. Okay. So now that we have our new certificate, assuming you've gone through the process and there were no errors, um, we will have a certificate on our Raspberry Pi, which includes all subdomains of our domain and just our domain, which is exactly what we want. We just need to now conclude the setup as we did in the previous video. So let's go through that quickly. Let's first navigate into our website directory where we're building our website. So CD, I'm going to reference my current directory with a dot forward slash website, press enter. That takes us into our website directory. Let's use ls to list what's inside. And I'm going to add a few uh, extra flags so that I can see what's going on. It's easier for me to see if I have it in a nice list form here. That's excellent. So what we can see is we've got two directories, a database and nginx. Um, and in there we've got a lib let's encrypt zip file, which is something that I probably should have deleted. That shouldn't be there. So for completeness, I'm just going to delete that so that we can keep the things nice and clean. That was obviously from a earlier uh, attempt. So let's just do ls minus alh again. There we go. So that's neater. So we've got our Docker file, our Docker compose file, and two directories. Now our certificates need to live inside the nginx directory. So if we just have a look inside and have an ls, there we go, we can see that we've got these two zip files. And if you remember, these are the two zip files which will be transferred over to the Docker container at runtime. So we need to replace those. So do as I do. I'm going to type in the following, sudo zip minus r lib underscore let's encrypt dot zip zip <coughs> and then slash var slash lib slash let's encrypt. Okay. So that's basically saying create a lib let's encrypt zip file in my current directory based on the content of var lib let's encrypt. Now this will probably be empty like it was last time, but I do it just to be sure. We haven't renewed any certificates yet. This is unnecessary at this stage, but I do it as it's part of my procedure and it's worth doing it just to be sure. I'm now going to press up on my keyboard to get the last command and I'm going to go left and I'm going to switch lib for etc like we did in the last video, and I'm going to change the path to etc. So this is to do the same thing, but for the etc content of Let's Encrypt. Press enter and it builds our zip file for us. Okay, 
Now, before we go any further, it's a good idea to take our containers offline. So if you type in docker compose down, uh, you will take your existing containers offline. <clears throat> now, in my case, I've already done it. But if you hadn't, you will now see your existing three containers that were hosting your website, <clears throat> providing your database and providing you with your reverse proxy will have been taken offline. So you want them down. And now we're going to move these two zip files we've just created into the Nginx directory. And that's done as follows. So type in MV and then lib underscore. And at this point, you can use the tab key to complete the rest of the line. Um, and then we want to put the file into dot slash nginx because that's where our docker compose process is going to look for this file. Press enter. Obviously, I have to overwrite the file. Um, I'm going to use sudo to force the issue. There we go. So you can do the same. If you add a sudo to the start of the line, you will be able to immediately overwrite the original file. And now I'm going to do the same by using the up on the keyboard. And I'm going to go back to the lib section here and I'm going to replace it with etc and press enter. So at this point, I've replaced the certificates that we produced in video uh, 19. Uh, so the last video with the new ones. OK, and now that we've done that, we can simply do docker compose up minus D and get things going again. So docker hyphen compose up minus D. Wait for the containers to come up. OK, so when they're up, the last thing we need to do is we're going to need to check everything is working by navigating to our website, which we'll do now. So open a browser, uh, navigate your website, and hopefully with and without the www dot, you should be able to visit your website. OK, so off screen, I've just obtained a browser and typed in my two domains, my singleentity.com and my www dot. They are, one of these is www dot, but for some reason browsers can cut it off. Um, but they are, one of them is and one of them isn't. And as you can see, for me, it's working. Both of them are navigating to the same uh, boilerplate, hello world, WordPress website. Okay, so hopefully you've got the same thing. Hopefully you now can navigate uh, to your website using both the subdomain www and without it. Apologies for having had to add an additional video to fill this in, which was very similar to the last video, but with uh, basically a, a, an extra few characters in the command. But it's an oversight that I made <clears throat> a good few weeks ago, <clears throat> and it needed correcting at some point. So hopefully if you followed this video course through, you'll forgive me for having to uh, have repeated um, a small part of the course. OK, so thank you very much. I hope now you've got everything running on both of these ways of addressing a website and hopefully if you're interested take a look at my email uh, server video series which follows on from this one okay thank you very much and i will see you in the next video